Hi, and welcome to What's Out There. We're going to talk about the Rockwood Meadows Trail today. This can be found by coming off of West Main Street, Hopkinton, as you head towards Upton. Take a left on School Street, and it's a poop point three miles just past Nazneen Circle. What's really cool about this property is we have a meadow, we have some rocky areas, and it's obviously woods, so it does combine three different areas of wildlife and what this says briefly is this property includes over 350 acres of protected space partially in Hopkinton or 25 acres in Hopkinton partially in Upton um, there are accesses from different parts of uh, this area some in Milford uh, some in Hopkinton some in Upton obviously and there's funding from different conservation uh, services so we got about um, a long-range view of Wachusa Mountain which is 27 miles to our west so it's actually got a, an incredible variety of wonderful things in nature just standing here I could hear a killdeer flying over they go kadia 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 like that and there was a flock of starling when we get into the woods we're gonna hear some other birds I didn't see any deer in there but who knows you can hunt here um, but not in the open space for Rockwood Meadow. So if you go hiking, please make sure you have your bright colors on. The other thing I would suggest in the springtime is tick protection, which would be tucking your pants, tucking your socks inside your pants. So I have, um, it's not going to look lovely, but I don't care. I would rather not have ticks. So now I have the lovely tick protected um, area down there. I also would advise bringing water. Um, it's it's pretty strenuous in some places it's going because you're going up and down. So anyway, let's go see what's out there. Oh, sorry. So this parking lot area it has space for a lot of cars. We also have you know the sign, lots of um, arrows to tell us where we're going. There are vernal pools in here. Um, it's a beautiful setting of a neighborhood, kind of a farm-like scene across the street. And then uh, we're next to Nazneen Circle, as I said earlier. So we do have some housing um, next to us. So it's just a, it's a wonderful spot, easy to get to, pretty easy walk. But you can go up Peppercorn Hill if you are so inclined. So let's go see what's out there. So coming in through here, this is the beginning of the woodsy part. I love seeing all of these birches. We have white birch, we have grape birch. Someone actually did a nice little bridge for us out of cut pieces of birch. So in these woods are mostly hardwoods, so that, but birch is soft. Um, so, but we have birch, we have pine, we do have some oak. So as you look up and around you, there is a variety of trees. Right now, there aren't a lot of leaves because it's March, um, but it's just beautiful whether there are leaves or not leaves. So let's keep going. So here are more of these beautiful birch all along the trail. Um, we do have the housing next to us. But as you walk along this beautiful rock wall with this lovely trail of birch, it's very peaceful and beautiful. All right, and here we see one of the really good signs along this trail talking about how we are taking a right here. So trail comes in from the meadow, turns to the right, let's keep going. So some interesting stuff about the trail is it's a halt trail, which is Hopkinton Area Land Trust, if I didn't say that earlier. And they bought this property in 2015, which means they take care of it. Um, it's on their website, you can go to halt. Um, dot com I think um, website and it's got information on all the trails so I want to stop here for a second because you can see there's another complex behind us I think it's called Rockwood Meadows um, complex uh, or might even be an over 55 community so along this trail it's quiet it's beautiful but we are next to housing so obviously you don't have a loud party here which you wouldn't anyway so let's keep going so coming along here, we really appreciate the Boy Scouts and Girl Scouts who have done these bridges over the wetland areas. And right here, this turns into a wood chipped path, which is also awesome because it's very muddy back there. And this wood chip path keeps on going. So let's go. So here are two morning doves uh, on the 
pine tree. And they're over a wetland area, which is all throughout here. So I would expect to hear spring peepers in about a month or so. One of the sounds that I absolutely love because it means spring is actually here instead of feeling warmer and then cold and then warmer and then cold. So when the turtle doves, um, morning doves, sorry, make one noise, it's hoo 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 and then the other noise they make when they're flying is kind of a twittery, like dee -da 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 -da. you can't even, I can't even do that one. But two morning doves there, two just flew over us. Beautiful wetland area here that we can expect to hear some spring peepers at. Let's keep going. All right, so right here, as we're still next to the housing and there's a little um, culvert right there, there's a green ribbon on the right and there's a trail that cuts up to the left. It is not the wood chip trail. Wood chip trail continues to the right, but that just goes up to the housing. That's an entrance, so we're not going to go up there. Um, John Ritz just let me know that this used to be a motto farm and they used to grow Christmas trees here. So that area is a lot of flat, beautiful land for the housing. We're going to go into the woods that is not uh, full of housing. So going up to the left on all kinds of tree roots now. So as I come down the hill here and I'm hearing trees creaking against each other, which is a kind of cool sound and the wind is blowing, I see this beautiful waterfall. So there's a brook coming down, nice bridge built by Boy Scouts or Girl Scouts, I'm sure, going down the hill to Lake Maspinock, which is down this way. So that is east, west, and we're heading north. Is that right? Yeah. So just past the waterfall, we come up on these beautiful glacial rocks. They're covered with lichen, and I am liking these rocks. Sorry about the pun. Um, so as you see, they're just kind of dropped here along the woods, and then we have more along the trail. So as we're walking, we're looking at glacial rocks, vernal pools, we're looking at moss, and, and just a gorgeous area listening to birds. So let's keep going. So all along here, not only do we have these beautiful rocks, but if we look down on the ground, we have wintergreen growing all along the, the understory here. Um, and wintergreen is really good if you chew it. it. It's a beautiful, you know, that wintergreen taste, obviously. So all in this area, we have the wintergreen, and we have some, some of the little pine, and we have some of the moss. And it's lovely. So right here, this is really cool. This is called shelf lichen, but there's a lot of it. So it's a different kind of look on this side. On this side, you have the, the flat lichen. And then as I look over through this um, area of trees, I see a tree that's got a big bump on the side. And that's where there would have been an insect or either insect or damage to the tree. And the tree puts up a protective bump in that spot. That's very interesting. And then past that, I can see a tree that looks like it's got lots of woodpecker holes in it. All right, so right here is where we have an intersection of about five different trails. We are now on the Wollaston Trail, uh, which there's a sign for right here, telling us that we're going straight. And this is now Upton Conservation Land. If we go left, we go down to Lake Maspinock that way. If we go straight, there's a left turn that takes us down to Lake Maspinock on the other end. And then if we go off to the right, we get up to Peppercorn Hill Summit. And I think it's 1.2 miles from parking lot to Peppercorn Hill Summit. So this whole area gives you at least an hour of walk, depending on which choice you make. And we see some dog walkers coming in. So we're going to keep going. Hi. All right, so this is just past this spot where we stopped. There's a sign here that says Wollaston Trail 5, which may mean five miles, it doesn't. Um, so anyway, if you go to the right here, you go down and it loops back around the way we were just coming. If you go straight here, it connects to the Peppercorn Hill Trail. And this one, when you go this way, it can hook around the bottom of Peppercorn Hill. So this one goes up Peppercorn Hill and down to Lake Maspinock. This one is more flat. 
and loops the way we just came and also loops at the base of Peppercorn Hill. So we're gonna go this way. Coming up this path where you can see Glacier obviously dumped all these rocks here, the little rocks. Probably there was a river here at some point, looks like. And then right here, again, we see the bigger glacial rocks with some lichen, beautiful. And then as we go up further here, we're gonna go to the left, down to Lake Maspinock. Straight ahead would be the, the walk to Peppercorn. Oh no, sorry. We're gonna go straight to Peppercorn Hill, come back and then go down to Maspinock. I'll tell you again when we get up there. More beautiful rocks along the walkway here. So this is so cool. It looks like pavement, but this right here is bedrock, as in Flintstone type bedrock. And uh, it's, it's amazing to see things like this. I was corrected in my opinion that maybe that was a, a river at one point. It's really just a place where the slow moving glacier dropped some rocks on its path. So let's keep going. Okay, so today it's a little windy to hear the birds and see the birds, um, but the other day when I was in here, I was hearing woodpeckers. This is a prime woodpecker tree. Lots of holes all around this. Um, so it's really, it's cool to see, just to see what work they've done on the tree. It's even cooler to see them pecking away at that. So thanks for being there, tree. So, just past that beautiful bedrock, we have blueberry bushes here. It's hard to tell that they're blueberry bushes because all the leaves are gone, clearly no berries, but they have a distinctive low bushy shape that is a blueberry bush. So if you come here uh, late spring, summer, you will be able to see blueberries on these trees and I mean, bushes, which means you're gonna have more birds deer in this area. Um, bears also like berries. So I don't think they're a bear in this area right now, but there have been in the past. And this is where they would want to be. So let's keep going. So again, really cool rocks here. And from a geological perspective, this band right here that goes right in the middle of this rock, this is an igneous rock. So this would have been formed by you know, being way deep under earth and kicked up. So I think this is called a pegmatite dike. And I've seen things like this up at um, Last River Gorge in, in uh, Woodstock from uh, New Hampshire. So just a really cool geological thing happening right here in our own backyard. Let's keep going. Hi. So as the trees are looking kind of shorter and I'm seeing more sky, i have seen that along this beautiful bedrock, we're coming up to the summit of Peppercorn Hill. So follow me. Here we are at the top of Peppercorn Hill. I feel like I should do one of those rocky things. Um, and we see evidence of beer cans and fire. So people come up here to enjoy it. Um, if you do this, be very careful because we do not want this area burned. It looks like they were keeping their fire pretty contained, um, whoever this is. I do see beer bottles and cans, so a little disappointed in that, but I understand. So I found this moss dug up over there and I want to just show you what it looks like. So it's pretty shallow rooted. It's was how I, probably a dog was digging it up after doing its business. Oh, huh, this might be, well anyway. Um, so just to show you how nice and fluffy the moss is, it's just beautiful ground cover um, and the other thing I want to say from this spot here is sun is coming up from there that's east so that means that's west so we would be able to see Mount Wachusett behind me if the trees weren't there so there isn't a, an incredible like panoramic view in terms of sightseeing but if we go a little farther this way there is an opening so we're going to go check that out Right, so coming from the summit and trying to find the overlook, outlook, I see a sign here that says peak three. Three is marking a trail. So we're gonna go up here and check out the view. So this is the amazing outlook that we have, overlook that we have of the trees and the little bowl here, glacial bowl. Um, if we were going to see Wachusett, 
we could look directly that way, but we have trees here. So it's possible there's a better view over this way. Uh, I'm not sure. But there are amazing sights to see. Wind is blowing towards me, so I'm not going to blow off the mountain. And one other thing I wanted to show you is that I found an owl pellet. Um, so this is very exciting to me. It's gray fur, which would be the mouse fur. And then there's some little bones in it. Um, so this tells me that we have owl here. So what happens is the owl eats it, eats the mouse, and it coughs back up in a pellet what can't go through, like the hair, the fur, the, the nails, the teeth, bones. Um, so it's really cool because it's evidence of an owl. So we have beautiful sights to see, amazing evidence of nature here on Peppercorn Hill. We are in Upton, and we're very grateful that this is in our neck of the woods. So we're hearing a few more birds coming back from the summit. The sun's coming out. And I found an oak gall, which I've talked about before. But this one's actually attached to the leaf. So you can see what I'm talking about. What happens is an insect lays an egg. There's a tiny one here. And then the leaf goes, blows up around that egg because it sees it as an invader, same way that an oyster makes a pearl. So that's a really cool thing, oak gall. And right here is the trail down to Lake Maspinock. As we said, we've got the pink tie on the tree. It forks off the main Wollaston Trail. So I'm gonna leave the oak gall right here with the other oak leaves, and let's go down to the lake. So here we are coming down the trail, and I see that it gets very steep right here. What you want to do when you get on the steep part is just go slow or you're going to be going down on your backside. So I just took a little sip of water because this is hard work. But we did just come down the hill. It's more of a flat area here. And now we see the lake. It's so beautiful. So right along this area is where we are headed back into Hopkinton and into the halt section of the trail. Um, I don't recognize these houses from this end, but I think I know we are headed into Hopkinton. And I just heard a chickadee. I see a nest that could be a squirrel, could be an owl. It's, uh, I think it's a squirrel's nest. A lot of leaves in a pile. And I hear a tufted titmouse. So the sky's clearing, wind is dying, We're starting to hear the birds. So here is the, again, a little bit of a steep hill down toward the lake. I'm hearing the chickadee, and the chickadee in this case is making the <laughs> call. It's not the chickadee dee dee. So that one, when they do <laughs> means I'm available and I'm looking for a mate. That's what that means. So it's springtime, the water's whoop. Be careful of your footing as you walk down the hill toward the lake. So here again is evidence of glacial activity, this beautiful, beautiful rock formation on the side of this hill coming back down towards the lake. So just gorgeous. I can imagine all kinds of things like, I don't know, bears like that. There, no, I don't see any caves, but it's just a beautiful rock formation. Okay, so right here, this is what happens to dead trees. The birds start doing their woodpecker thing. The ants start eating their way on the inside. And then this particular tree split. We have part of it that fell this way. It's leaning against that tree. And you can see all these little pieces have insect holes through them. Um, there is a woodpecker hole on the other side here. So it's kind of cool to see what nature does and how it does it. So behind me is Sandy Beach. So as you're coming down this trail, you'll see Sandy Beach. So we definitely are in Hopkinton, and we have been for a little while. So let's keep going down to the lake. Okay, so we are now down to the level of the lake, which as I said is 349 
elevation above sea level. Um, to the right of this space is where my old house is at the end of Pine Island Road off of Camp Street. And then we're looking at the end of the housing on um, Downey Street. So this is where the houses in Hopkinton begin. And then as we pan to the left, we can see Sandy Beach um, sort of at the north end of this space. As we came down here to set up the camera, we saw a flock of hooded mergansers flying away. They look like loons or a waterfowl, but they have a white um, area on their head, which opens and closes in a, a triangle. So if it opens up and it's a white triangle and it closes on their head, you know that's a hooded merganser. Very cool. Um, all right, so let's keep walking. So right here, this is just a little beachy area on the west side of Lake Maspinock. Sandy Beach over there, houses over here. It's just beautiful. This is where a lot of driftwood washes up. Um, there's obviously erosion here. Just a nice place you would not be able to get here, um, you know, except by a canoe. I do see some ant holes in the ground. Um, and then that area, there's an area beyond the trees that's just all, I mean, beyond the houses that's just all forest area. But that's um, preserved land. So it's a conservation area. So just a beautiful, beautiful space here in Hopkinton. So this is just a beautiful rock area again um, towards the end of the Lake Maspinock Trail. The trail goes along the edge of the water and, um, and then it's going to turn back up again towards where we came off the Wollaston Trail. But it just, I love seeing all of these rocks um, and sort of wild wilderness really is what it is. So let's keep going and then we'll turn up onto the other part of the trail. So this, again, is so interesting and amazing to me. This used to be one rock split right in the middle from whatever, you know, rumblings of earth or whatever pressures happened. So it's split in the middle. There's a tree growing here. Um, and so the roots of that tree are probably what eventually split it right here. Um, this piece is like a puzzle. This piece comes right off here. Um, so it's really interesting to me and exciting to see what nature does over time to um, even things as hard as rocks. So here we see another beautiful bridge. Thank you Boy Scouts or Girl Scouts who built this. And the bridge is here because we have a beautiful little river waterfall coming down to the lake. We're almost at the end of the Lake Maspinock part of the trail. Oh yeah. So this is really interesting. Right here as we're coming in, I see that there's what used to be a fireplace right here. Used to be a fireplace. And then as I look around for evidence of what else might indicate that a house was here, I see a stone cistern here. There's a big um, metal canister inside that and a pipe coming out the top. So that could have been water collection, um, something connected to a house. So this would have been beautiful view of the lake, water flowing down next to it. And right up here we see the halt trail. So we're headed back up the hill. Um, right down here, evidence of woodpecker on this tree that fell. Lots of amazing things here. So now we're coming up from the lake. We see that we're back on halt trail and we're headed up to the left. There's a man who's got private property here. You can see his, the stone support of his driveway. He's kind enough to let us walk a little bit on his property, so we want to be very respectful of private property. So as I'm coming up the end of the trail from Lake Maspinock, I'm going to cross this driveway. Um, there is a halt trail that continues that way, but we're going to cross over onto the Deneen Austin Powder trail of the Halt Hopkinton Area Land Trust. We have to cross the driveway to get there and we're going to go back up to where we were in the beginning. All right, so we're at the beginning of the 
Denine Trail, just for short. I'm seeing what looks like uh, frog's eggs in a collection. There are a bunch of jellied bubbles in this waterway that goes down to the lake. So let's keep going. So coming up from the trailhead of the Denine Austin Powder Trail, which is off of Denine, there's parking for one car or so. Denine is off of Oakhurst, which is off of West Main. As we walk along this pathway back to where we were, we see some beautiful ground pine. And this is a baby white pine, but there are lots of little of these, of this princess pine or ground pine growing all in here as a beautiful ground cover for us. So as we walk along the trail, we have some more trees that fell in all of the wind and storm. Um, kind of cool. I'm going to do the limbo under these trees and we'll be fine. Actually, they're not that close to the ground. So, But it is kind of fun to see what has happened over time with all of the trees and the insects and the woodpeckers and the wind. Okay, so coming up that trail from Lake Maspinock, we turned onto the Deneen Austin Powder Trail. Now we're at a kind of a fork. That trail is not part of where we're walking. That goes down to Angel's Way, and it's not part of the trail system. So we want to stay to the left here. That is grassy, so not really well used. We're going to stay on the part here that's rocky, heading east. That also is not part of our trail system. So we're just going to head east through this beautiful wall. So we have one more trail junction to talk about coming up out of the area that we were just in. We're now on the Wollaston Trail. This trail to the left is marked with orange tape and this goes along the ridge. Then down into the valley is where the Wollaston Trail was and up to beyond that is Peppercorn Hill. So you could conceivably go that way down up and around. We chose to go down this way, hook around, down through and back up. So there are a couple of different loops. They are on the poster at the beginning, and they're also on the HALT website. So please make sure you have a map with you when you go so you know where you're going and where it connects. All right, so we are coming to the end of the trail. This, the birch trees there were where we came in off of the meadow, and then there's the meadow, and then there's the parking lot. So we're going to stop here. I'm going to do a quick tick check. I don't see any ticks on my light-colored socks or my pants. So I'm going to, I can switch it back to normal view uh, if we want to. And i um, just going to walk off into the sunset here. And I uh, hope I see you on the trail sometime.